America's 20-year war in Afghanistan has finally come to a close, but the human toll and destruction left by it will have a lasting impact. Thousands have been displaced from their homes in the past month. The U.S. has evacuated more than 122,000 people from Kabul. Roughly 117,000 of them are Afghans. The rest are American citizens. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says between 100 and 200 Americans remain in the country. Exact totals of those we have lost are imprecise. The Defense Department estimates the U.S. has lost over 2,300 troops since the war began, including the 13 killed in action by a suicide bomber last week. Roughly 66,000 Afghan military and police officers and 47,000 Afghan civilians have died. And those totals do not count the foreign and opposition troops, humanitarian aid workers, and journalists who also lost their lives. The U.S. has also taken a massive financial hit, spending more than $2.2 trillion on the 20-year conflict. With interest, that number could balloon to over $6 trillion by 2050. For more on the pending refugee crisis, I want to bring in Krish Omara Vignaraja in Baltimore. She is the president and CEO of the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service. She's also a former Democratic candidate for governor of Maryland and served as senior advisor at the State Department to Secretaries John Kerry and Hillary Clinton. Krish, welcome. Great to have you with us. So now that the evacuation operation is complete, how would you evaluate what U.S. troops have done over the past several weeks? Yeah, we're extremely grateful um, for what was a Herculean effort in terms of relocating that roughly 120,000 people out of Afghanistan, as you just noted. Uh, by historical standards, that is uh, no small feat, especially on such short notice. But the truth is, refugee advocates like the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service had been flagging this for months. Um, we couldn't wait until the 11th hour to operationalize such an evacuation. And so while we are grateful for all of those who have been moved to safety, we know that history won't judge us alone on how many people we got out. We will also be judged on how many we leave behind. And so I think I just want to highlight for viewers and for the countless Afghans who have sent us messages over the last couple of days, this mission isn't over. We will not give up on you. And so of the roughly 117,000 Afghans who've been evacuated from the country, how many are now in the U.S.? And what is the process to get the rest of them here? Will it be slow going? Unfortunately, it will. Um, the situation is fairly fluid right now, uh, but our best indication is that at least 7,000 special immigrant visa holders are now here in the U.S., but we know that there are tens of thousands more who are at transit points abroad, including at military installations in about a dozen or so countries. Um, it is going to be slow going because they are going through extensive vetting um, in order to be ultimately cleared to travel to the United States. So we're expecting that number will increase in the weeks to come. There are an estimated 250,000 people still in Afghanistan who worked with the U.S. Uh, is there a process underway to get those people to safety? It's an important question because we can't stress enough that while the U.S. military is no longer on the ground, this mission of getting those in danger out to safety must continue in other forms. Uh, so first and foremost, we need to do everything in our power to ensure that Afghans who wish to leave can do so. Even though we don't have a U.S. military presence, we do have diplomatic leverage, and it's critical that that be used to provide safe passage to those at risk. Um, along similar lines, we do need to ramp up humanitarian assistance, not necessarily through the Taliban, but through test trusted NGOs and international organizations on the ground. I'm receiving so many pleas indicating that people have no access to funding um, or, you know, basic resources, that offices and, and um, you know, storefronts are closed. Uh, since the beginning of this war alone, we know, uh, sorry, since the beginning of this year alone, more than half a million Afghans have been internally displaced. So these are the people that we're going to be focused on because we know that it is our responsibility to ensure for their protection as well. 
So what changes would you like to see happen to refugee programs to make this process easier in the future? And further, how can everyday Americans who hear about these refugees and want to help, how can they do their part? Yeah. I mean, look, it shouldn't take 10 years for an interpreter who has served our U.S. military to be allowed to come to the U.S. in light of that service and in light of the risks that they face. And yet we had a Taliban, uh, an interpreter who suffered, uh, you know, retribution from the Taliban, um, ultimately was killed early this year because of a decades long wait. This system has to be more efficient and effective. Um, in terms of what everyday folks can do, uh, it's actually so heartening because this is really an all hands on deck effort. Um, we're going to need employers who are willing to hire refugees so they can take those steps towards self-sufficiency. Uh, we'll need volunteers to help with apartment setups to drive these refugee families to doctor's appointments um, and other appointments. We're going to need tutors to help these families navigate a new life in a new language. And so this is really an effort where we've been so heartened by the more than 40,000 volunteers who have gone to the LIRS.org website and signed up. But we need tens of thousands more in the immediate and long term. And so I hope people understand that wherever they are in the country, there is a way to engage and to help these families. Krishamira Vignaraja, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate everything you're doing.